what they do, what they do, what they do. Got a early mindset Monday for y'all today. You know what I'm saying? They do Queen Sunny Speaks, Queen Akia, Akia, excuse me. Special, special early edition Mindset Monday today for y'all. Special guest coming up for y'all. Y'all know I go uh, 6 o'clock, has something special for y'all. Has something special to y'all. You know, um, come on in whenever you're ready, Queen. <clears throat> what you mean, what happened? What, what you mean, what happened, Queen Sunny? Shout out to the Queen. <laughs> Shout out to the Queen Sunny Speak, man. World, man. Make sure y'all check her out. Baby, I'm doing I'm doing a live, baby. What they do, Queen? Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. And yourself? That's good. I'm doing great. So, so, I got some questions for you. I got some questions. <laughs> I've been looking forward for this live. And um, I got some questions for you. I got some so, answers for you. <laughs> okay. So, first of all, we just started. So, tell everybody who you are and mm -hmm. um, what you do. Okay, well, my name is Akia Davis. Um, I'm an author. I just released a book. Um, well, I released it last summer. It's called Finding My Flow. Um, and I'm also a speaker <laughs> and a mentor. So um, I'm excited to share my message with you guys. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, so now, this book. What they do, everybody chime in. I got the queen, Kia Davis, in the building. Special <laughs> treat for y'all. Very special treat for y'all. So, I want to start by how did you come up with the concept? She has a book out, Finding My Flow. Mm -hmm. and we're going to get into that. How did, you, how did you come up with the concept for the book? Like, what led you into writing this book? Um, well, what led me into writing the book, um, I've su suffered from anxiety and depression for many years, and um, I had it on my heart to write a book to kind of share my story. Um, I've had it on my heart for a while, but um, the time that it actually came about, I was in like a very dark space. I was um, really dealing with depression at a high level, mm. and... Um, and I talk about it um, in the beginning of the book. So um, I was in this very dark place, and I really felt like I, I didn't want to be here anymore. And so I was laying there, and I was just, you know, crying, and just really, like I said, in a dark place. And um, spirit was speaking to me, and, and it just led me to my bottles in my closet. So I went to my closet, and I started reading the journals. And um, I have, like, box of journals is a ton of them and so I'm reading through them and I started noticing a pattern like uh, every year I was saying the same thing I was trying to get into this rhythm or this flow and and it just um it dawned on me that you know what what would happen if I actually got into this flow maybe that is the key to my happiness or the key um, that I've been looking for to unlock my happiness and mm -hmm. so Writing the book actually saved my life. So I started writing the book and writing out um, the steps on how to find your flow and um, just what the message is about. And so many people could relate to my story. And so, like I said, I really feel like the book saved my life. It was really a tool that God used to, um, to keep me here and keep me going. Mm. So now, this depression, do you mm -hmm. feel like, I know that writing the journals, which led to the book, was more like a, a release, a catharsis. But mm -hmm. is that what brought you out of the depression? Or can you talk about what brought you out of the depression, some of the steps, um, the mindset that, that was involved with that? A lot of the depression um, dealt with having a lack of clarity. And I think a lot of people deal with depression or just not knowing what they want in life or where they're going in life. And if you don't have something that you're looking forward to in the future, 
then that caused uh, stagnation and it caused um, confusion. And a confused mind does nothing. So um, for me, having a lack of clarity about my life, um, my purpose, that's what kept me in darkness and, and depression. And so writing the book and what brought me out of depression was actually applying the steps of finding my flow to my own life. Mm -hmm. um, and the concept of finding my flow is actually creating a vision for your life, like getting really clear and intentional about what you want and then break that down on a micro level on a day to day basis of how you can get to that goal or how you can accomplish that goal. Mm. Now, when you speak of the, the, the lack of clarity and the mm -hmm. confusion, how I'm trying to see how I could put it. Um, how, how do you pick something? Let's say you don't know what to pick or finding your purpose in that context. How were you able to decipher between the options, the confusion, and narrow in to one specific thing to start going towards? That makes sense? Yes. So the first step in finding your flow is... Um, asking a question of who am I? So it's actually taking a journey of self-discovery. So in order to actually know what it is that you're put here to do, you have to first discover who you are. Um, and especially, I think, for Black people, because we have been, our history has been distorted so much that we don't really know who we are at the core, you know, at our root. And so it, take, it takes us actually going all the way back and kind of deprogramming ourselves of what we've been taught that we should do and who we are and where we came from. And once you can identify who you are at your core, then you get so much more clarity on, on like who you are and what you like to do. And, and that leads you into your purpose. Mm, because I could be honest, I could really, really relate to this topic because mm -hmm. through, especially for myself, I can speak of myself in the like past two years mm -hmm. between everything that, the moving around, the different things that that I was, I've been getting introduced to, the different individuals, and then being a father that mm -hmm. homeschools my daughter. So, I've I've been, you know, I felt like a lot of a lot of the time doesn't belong to me. So, mm. so it's like I forgot who I was. Okay, get some water, baby. Okay. Um, my daughter mm -hmm. here you know what i'm saying right. so it's like it's like what do i really like mm -hmm. you know or what 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 do i like anymore like i before all of this transpired yeah. i knew but you know what i mean yes, yeah you can, baby. um you know what do i really like and i feel or who am i like how did i get here in a lot mm -hmm. of contexts right what right. do i really like uh, have I? Do I like the same things? Have I evolved? I don't even know. I haven't mm -hmm. had any of that solitude or isolation for concentration and elevation. And I feel like a lot of um, people, a lot of people deal with that that mm -hmm. issue. You know, whether it yeah. uh, being that um, I don't know, baby. You could go ahead and have it. All right. Um, a lot of people deal with that, whether they're in a context where they don't have enough time, they may have too much time, mm -hmm. or it's not, you know, focused on them, themselves or whatever it may be. So um, right. that's why I was kind of asking that. And I know a lot of people can relate to that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very important to take that time, that solitude time. I'm actually taking some time myself right now to really, because we're always going, always going through like a shedding phase or a evolving phase. We're never at a point where we're just, we've arrived, you know, like this is who I am, this is who I'm gonna be. No, because like you said, you become a father, you become a mother or just different things that happen within your life. It changes who you are. And so you always have to be open to evolving and shedding um, your skin so that you can get that new skin. And so like I'm in this phase now where I'm, I'm focusing more on myself and what it is. I'm about to be 40 this year. And so it's like, okay, this is a new decade truly for me. So what do I want to accomplish over the next 10 years? And so it's important to really figure out what, what do I like and what do I want? What makes me happy? Um, 
And also with that, when you're doing the things that you naturally like and what naturally make you happy, that raises your frequency and your vibration. And that's going to attract even more of what you want and even more good in your life. Mm. Now, I have another question for you. Okay. So, people often say, find your passion, and then that's where you find your purpose. And mm -hmm. then I've, especially, you know, okay, so, and then I've heard other entrepreneurs say, forget about your passion. Get your bag and then let that fund your passion. So how, what do you say to that, basically? What's your viewpoint and perspective? Um, I think it's a balance to that. Um, I think that now for some people, they can go and chase their passion. They can leave their jobs and be homeless. And, and that sacrifice, it, it usually pays off, but everybody can't do that. Some people have kids, you know. So you have to be realistic about it. So for me, I have my own balance. I'm, I'm a business owner, but I also have my passions. I'm a speaker and an author and all those things that I do on my own time and my own dime. So um, it's a balance with that. Uh, and I'll say it depends on the person and the situation. Mm. Okay. Okay. How, um, How has the uh, reception to the book been? It's been great, actually. Like I said, a lot of people could relate to the story, and I've had a lot of people hit me up and say, you know, I deal with anxiety and depression also, but I never talked about it because I think it's so taboo in our community, and a lot of people don't talk about it or don't really identify it as depression. Um, we go through so much as a people, and it's like it's very important for us to really discuss it and get help if necessary. But a lot of people has really been um, very, um, a lot of positive feedback about the book. Okay. Okay. I know, I know that um, it's an inspiration for a lot of people because, you know, a lot of times we don't realize how many people. Mm -hmm. um, the name of the book is Finding My Flow. Finding My yes. Flow. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, the link is in your bio, right? It is. It's in my bio. Okay. It's on Amazon. He said, pin it. Let me pin it. Sorry if I'm, I'm too close. I'm all in your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. My, man, my flow. Mm -hmm. You say it's on Amazon as well? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Boom. Finding my flow. Akia Davis came. Yeah. Akia Davis. Finding my flow by Akia Davis. And... Does does it come with the wonderful sage and 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 the risk test everybody or that, <laughs> no. was, like <laughs> that was that was like the pre order so no oh the pre order excuse <laughs> yeah. me you know what I'm saying I, you know yeah. what I'm saying you know, you know what I'm saying yeah, I still yeah. got my matter of fact I wear it so much it don't even got no writing on it oh my I gotta god switch to the blue I literally yeah. been I haven't taken it off since I got it oh you? my goodness so many people say that I'm like wow. Mm -hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad it is helpful. I mean, I wear it myself as a reminder. Sometimes we get, you know, out of flow to the or the gray. yeah. <laughs> it was definitely. Yeah, I got you know, I got mine's pre order, y'all. So y'all been getting a book, but y'all not gonna get the, you know what I'm saying, the you know what I'm saying, triggers right. that you with it that help you get your energy and you know get yeah, your mindset all, right. You know what all I'm about raising that frequency. That's absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I put that on my instant stories a lot in the mornings. I like to start mm -hmm. off with different hertz frequencies. Yeah. And you know, get my meditation and you know what I'm saying, get my mm -hmm. vibration and you know, my chakras aligned and all that good stuff up. Right, right, right. Well, Same here. Wash, um definitely. So how did you get into this whole energy, chakras, hurts, frequencies? <laughs> you know, without, we, we ain't going to go too, too deep in it with them. Right. You know what I'm saying? But, right. you know, how, how did you come into some of that information? Um, so I've always been a very spiritual person, even as a child. Like, I always had spiritual gifts and just had a very um, deep insight into the spirit world. So um, I wasn't raised religious or anything, but when I got older, um, I started practicing Christianity. And um, I was actually a leader in, in the church, so I was doing a lot of speaking and um, a lot of mentoring in that space. 
but I felt so unfulfilled and so disconnected. Um, I'm an avid reader, so I studied the Bible and I had a lot of questions. People couldn't answer the questions. And one day I was just really fed up. I was like, God, I, I really don't, this is not fulfilling. And I really don't feel like I'm living in my purpose. And so I just, I, I said, you know what, God, I, I, I stop it all. I'm not going to church. I'm not moving. Not that I was moving away from him, but I was saying, I need you to show me who I am. Mm -hmm. And he took me on this journey of self-discovery that led me to um, just my roots, my ancestors, um, the whole frequency, becoming a vegan, just, it just led me on this journey. And then I started connecting with other people who was on the same journey and, and seemed like they were getting the same messages. And so I felt like this is, this is right. Because when you start going on a journey, you'll start getting these confirmations and this um, synchronicity will start happening. Like everything will line up at the right time at the right place. You'll come across the right documentary or just the right person um, who can deliver that next message. And so that's how I got to where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Check, make sure you check out Sunny Speaks. Um, definitely. Vegan definitely. Chef. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she have a great product called Sunny Smack and Steak. And, oh, okay. Uh, it's vegan, no um, no soy in it, and it's a steak. Okay. It's multi-purpose. You could do a whole lot of different things with it. She does. Um, she's okay. in Atlanta, but she does meal prep and stuff. So yeah, make sure you check. I'll it definitely out. check it out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She's definitely doing thing? some things. You go ahead and do that, baby. Put it at a table. So um, <clears throat> okay. So now, now you're able to turn your passion into profits. I ain't going to say profits. That's so capitalistic. <laughs> You're able to uh, you know, sustain from your passion mm -hmm. as far as mentoring, speaking, mm -hmm. uh, your, your, your book, which helps share your story, which helps others. How mm -hmm. does that feel for you? It feels amazing. Um, it, when you're doing something that you love, it doesn't feel like work. And I think I love that the most. Um, it's just like I get up and I'm I'm ready to help. Like, and I've always been that way. Just even in my personal life, dealing with friends, like they, all, I'm always the one that they call, you know. And so, just giving and being that voice of reason and having that insight that people can really resonate with, mm -hmm. it's amazing to me, and I I love it. Yeah. So now, from from the entrepreneurial aspect, mm -hmm. how did you learn? the business of this, the business of, of mm -hmm. the books and the speaking and the mentoring, mm -hmm. how did you H learn and B begin to transition? Um, I think I learned, I learned through social media. Like I was, I'm always on the, the new thing that is coming up in social media. So any new app, I'm always on it. So when like Twitter and all that first started, I was like on it. And so I started, uh, I'm not on, on Twitter as much now, but I was then, and a lot of people who are who made it really big, I started out with them, and my name was, was being associated with those people because I was on it, and I, and I saw how they was moving, so I was moving the way that they were, and I started growing that way, and then, like I said, um, I was speaking in my area, so a lot of people know me here in Charlotte, um, so I get a lot of opportunities here, and um, just... I'm a businesswoman by heart. I mean, I've always, you know, had my own thing going on, even young as 16 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so like, like right now I'm part business owner of a construction company, you know, <laughs> and you know, a lot of women not in construction, but it's not even the industry is, is mm -hmm. business. I love business. And like I said, I'm a business woman. So I, any, in any field, any industry that I'm in, I know how to work it as a business woman. So even with the book and speaking, I know how to turn that into a business and to make a profit. Mm. Not that I'm doing it for the profit, but, you know, I know how to do yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, we have yeah. to, you know, we have to sustain ourselves now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. With no it's guilt about it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. Insta Instagram is a marketplace. You know, it, it, it definitely is, yeah. It's, you know, it's a marketplace and it's definitely a tool to be utilized. Uh, mm -hmm. for the betterment you know what i mean so um, yeah i mean that's the the way i connected with you just connecting with other people who are you know using this platform to gain financial gain or 
or to build themselves up. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely to build knowledge and to build yeah. wealth. Yeah. You know, um, you're a mother, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have three daughters. Three daughters. Okay, yeah. so how do you do it? How yeah. did you do it? How do you do it? I got to ask, work harder what they do, King Caribbean Clean, what they do. How do you do it, how Queen? How do I do it? Uh, how, how did you do it? How do you do it? And well, how does it go? How does it go? Just, just talk to a brother. You know time. what? It's it's hard, but here's the thing. I'm very, like, structured, like, routine, schedule. Like, when my kids were younger, like, 8 o'clock, you're going to bed. And even when they got older, like, 12 and 13, no matter where they were at, at 8 o'clock, they'd be out. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you are a working woman and you have kids, you have all this stuff going on, you have to have structure. And that's the main thing that I tell anybody, like, balance is good, but structure is better. And Balance is good. Yes. Is <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. But they're mm. older now. They're 20, 19, and 16. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So you you far beyond far past what where, where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like you see how them got all gray. In it. It's, yeah. Yeah. you only have one imagine yeah. having three that's they what all I'm asking young. like you know what I mean like how, how did you yeah. do it like you know cause I guess you know everybody's figuring it out but you yeah. know you did it so you know I'm always interested in uh, you know getting some insight getting yeah. some advice I had a good it. support system my mother she she helped me out a lot yeah okay yeah. okay so it's, it's all about the support system yeah the, yeah. when it comes to the the children and the mm -hmm. the work life balance I guess. Yes, it definitely. Yeah. Uh, uh. So do you have um any speaking engagements coming up that um that the people should know about? No, um I had a lot at the end of the year, but I said I was gonna take off January and and probably next month as well. Like I said, I'm going through this little shedding phase myself. And then I'll start, you know, pitching myself more. So right now I'm in, I'm in chill mode right now. <laughs> and as far as mentoring is concerned, um, how does that aspect of your business work? Like, um, mm -hmm. is it like a life coach uh, space? Is it an entrepreneurial space? Mm -hmm. Is it strictly for women? How does, how does the whole, uh, how does that work? Um, so I mentor, I mentor on the financial side as well, because that's what my degree is in. And like I said, I'm a business owner. So um, we actually teach classes at the office. Um, so I mentor, you know, individuals and business owners on the financial side. And then also, you know, with the book and things like that. Um, I do some one on one mentorship, but I haven't done a lot of that. I'm trying to find a space in that how I want to do it. Because I know it's, it's time consuming when you're doing one on one coaching as far as mentorship. Um, um, on a, you know, on the personal development level. So I'm trying to kind of figure that space out. How does that dif differ from a psychologist, if you will? Mm, I come, I come from a spiritual place, so more of a spiritualist. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I read people's energy um, in I get a lot of insight through through reading people's energy, and I'm I'm able to give them direction based upon that. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. okay. That's interesting. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And what yeah. what led you to do what led you to do that in that context? What made you say, you know what? I want to I want to mentor. I want to in, in, in that um, aspect per se um, it kind of it kind of just called me I guess you know a lot of people were just asking for it. and then I, I, like I said I've been doing it anyway in my personal life and so strangers and people from social media would inbox me or email me and so it just kind of like I kind of just fell into it actually mm. Mm -hmm. okay okay and that's what Let's I mean by that. when you're I'm sorry say it again no, no, go ahead. What what you were saying? And that's what I mean by when you when you work on yourself and you do your own personal development, 
things will naturally come to you. And so you will naturally discover the things that you are supposed to do. What flag is that in your bio? It's Ethiopian. Ethiopian. So yeah. I think it comes from those roots. I yeah, think it does. That comes from <laughs> the ancestors, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Chiming in, mm -hmm. chiming in and tapping in with you. Definitely. Tapping with you. Definitely. Have, have you been over there? I haven't, and um, it's been calling me lately. Uh, the other day, I was coming out of a, a restaurant, and this guy was like, um, are you Ethiopian? And I was like, yeah. He was like, I could feel your energy when you walked out the door. And, and we just wow. got into a conversation. He said he lived over there for like a year. And I was like, I've really been pulled to go there. And it's like confirmation after confirmation. Yeah, I need to go. <laughs> so is your people's, like your grandmother or something, from on my father's on, side, yeah. On your father's side, okay. yeah. So I'm um, raised by my mother, so I don't really know um, a lot of the history on that side. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. just been I researching went, myself, but mm -hmm. I, I really want to go over there. Yeah, I went to um, I went to Senegal. I have some family out in Senegal, and um, oh, okay, that yeah, that was an mm -hmm. amazing experience. You know, going mm -hmm. to the door of no return and yeah. Warwick, island and that was a that was an excellent experience wow. able to uh do it since i had peoples over there i stayed you know like in the city so it wasn't oh, wow. get the tourist experience mm -hmm. i actually had the local experience yeah and that's exactly how i want to experience it as well like i want to really experience the people and the culture yeah because because i realized through different traveling and i was going to a lot of different resorts a lot of hotels mm -hmm. It started to be for me, it started to look the same, you know what mm, I mean? Like, yeah, you know, Washington, uh, Ave and South Beach is similar to Bill Street in Memphis, it's yeah. similar to you know what I'm saying? I yeah. mean, Times Square is one of itself, but you get the gist of what I'm saying, you yeah. know, a beach is a beach is a beach, you know. I'm right. from Miami, so you know, mm -hmm. hotel on the beach, you know, Puerto Rico look like. You know what I'm saying? For yeah, yeah. Time. So right. I was really, I was really interested in getting, getting the the culture from the people. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Definitely from the culture, from the people. So yeah, yeah. So you know, I, it makes sense to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It makes <laughs> sense. So when you, you know, you go talk about the energies and the vibrations, and mm -hmm. I see the flag and the, <laughs> the flow, it just all fits. Yeah, all yeah, sides, yeah. You know it's in I mean? me. It's in me. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. you have this, you know, we never spoke personally like this, but I'm mm -hmm. getting just like a calm, tranquil, serene mm -hmm. energy, and it's uh, mm -hmm. free-flowing. So yeah. I can see why, you know, people would be attracted, you know what I'm saying, magnetized mm -hmm. towards you and feel free to open up. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, because people have to open up to allow you to, feel mm -hmm. their energy and then help them to help direct too, you know, so yeah. because if somebody comes and they have a wall up, you know, it's, it's no use. That's so true. People really trust me. And I, I really, um, grateful for that. People really trust me. And so my loyalty and trust means a lot to me because people have told me so many secrets and I'll never, you know, I'll take those things to my grave like that. That to me is part of my purpose to be a person who is, um, who, who's a keeper of secrets to make people feel safe to be who they are and to express themselves without judgment. So that means a lot to me. What do you do in a context? And, you know, I'm just playing devil's advocate, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So what do you do in a context where an individual says something that could possibly be detrimental to themselves or to someone else? How do you handle a situation like that? Um, with honesty, um, I don't sugarcoat anything. So I, I, I will, you know, really confront it with honesty. When it comes to being detrimental to yourself, uh, what what do you really mean by that when you say that? Um, like, give me an example of that. Okay. Um, someone comes to you in a state of depression, which mm -hmm. you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. And they feel, let's say, suicidal. Okay. So um, with suicide, to me, um, I'm never judgmental when it comes to suicide because I personally believe that it is an option. A lot of people get judged when they start talking about, um, 
you know, suicide, even when I, I never shared it with anybody until um, that day I was telling you about that I wrote, wrote about in the book. And so I called my mother and my brother. Um, I spoke with my mother first and she was kind of judgmental. She was like, you don't talk like that. Go, you know, you need to pray about it. And, you know, you're not supposed to talk like that. Basically, you know, she wasn't trying to hear my emotions and what I was feeling, what I was trying to tell her. And I would never do that to anyone. I would, you know, really allow them to talk it out themselves. Why are you feeling this way? Why do you feel like this is the option that you want to take? Like I said, it is an option and there's no judgment in that. You know, a lot of people say God wouldn't put more on you than you can bear. I don't, well, that's what the Bible says. Um, but I don't necessarily think that's true because a lot of people do end up taking their lives. So evidently, whatever they were going through, it was more than what they could bear. And mm. so... There's no judgment in suicide to me. I wouldn't, you know, encourage it or anything like that, but let's talk it out and let's see if there are other options that, that you can take. Why are you feeling this way? Is it lack of clarity or lack of love or, or are you just not dealing with your traumas? And then, you know, once a person starts talking it out themselves, they'll, they, sometimes they'll discover the, their own answer just by, really rationalizing and really talking about it. So why would I come to you in judgment and then you put up your defense mechanism by not expressing yourself and not really getting to the core of what's going on? Mm. Mm. So I always say um, be truthful. I'm always truthful, honest, and non-judgmental. How do you... Am I asking too many questions? No, not at all. <laughs> um, how do you not take in that energy and carry it with you? Aha. Uh, that's, Aha. <laughs> now that that is like I'm an empath. Like I can't even. I don't even like going to grocery stores or Walmart because the energy is so overwhelming. Like when me and my kids were in the mall, they know a certain time. They're like, "Mom, you, you're ready to go." And I'm like, "Yeah." because I would just get so much anxiety because of all of the energy that I'm around. Mm. And so when I'm dealing with someone on that level, I do have to sort of detox from, from that situation, whether it's taking like a spiritual bath or just, you know, going into some kind of meditation to kind of recalibrate. Because energies mm -hmm. do transfer and you have to be really careful about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because I'm, I'm the same way. Um, <clears throat> with with something that I do, um, I like to call Truck and Justin what they do. I like to call it creative consulting. So, mm -hmm. you know, an individual may have an issue or not even an issue, just a, a problem. And mm -hmm. I automatically, and I do that with my friends too, I automatically start thinking of a solution or I mm -hmm. automatically take it in like it's my Taking problem. on other people's problems, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So now mm -hmm. I find myself, you know, doing doing different work in that context and that's part of the job in a sense but yeah you know it's been a few times where they kept me up at night and it's not even you know my situation mm -hmm. so that's why i asked you because you know i'm i'm in that context too as far as a uh, empath and take on energy and mm -hmm. that comes from a place of caring you know mm -hmm. in my it opinion does. from a place yeah. of caring so mm -hmm. it's uh it can be difficult to to uh, balance, and that's why I was asking, like, you know, and how long does it usually take you to shake that, then to move on to something mm. else? Like, you wouldn't be able to book two back-to-back -back sessions, mm. in a sense. No, right? not if it's intense like that. You're talking about suicide and stuff like that. No, not at all. Um, but it, it really doesn't take long. Um, like I said, sometimes meditation just does it for me. I'm a big advocate for meditate for meditation. I know you probably heard me say that before. Mm -hmm. So um, I do different types of meditations that help me recover when it comes to my energy. Do you, um, even though you're a businesswoman, does business affect you in that same capacity? Because we know that. Um, Business is business, so you know it goes. Mm -hmm. It goes. <laughs> she said, "My meditation cousin." Um, <laughs> um, I, you know, business goes up, up and down. I love right? it too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So business, business goes up and down. So entrepreneurial depression. 
does mm-hmm. that affect you? Uh, and mm. and how do you deal? How do you deal with that? Because we know things in business don't always go the way we planned it. Right. Uh, losses losses occur. Mm-hmm. Uh, things you know anything Murphy's law anything that can happen will happen. So mm-hmm. um, being an empath and a creative and a mm-hmm. you know um, emotional being, if you will, how does that affect you? And how do you how do you work through those things? Um, I actually, it actually doesn't affect me. Um, like I work in a male dominant field. And so I work a lot in my masculine energy when I, when I'm in the office. Mm. And so, you know, for some reason I don't deal with like that, that type of energy. You know, I'm really like, this is what it is and this is how it's going to be type person. And so I don't really deal with that a lot. Um, so no, no, no depression or anxiety in that space. Uh, I think it, it's mostly when you're dealing with um, your emotions and your triggers is when those things um, take place. Okay. Okay. So like emotional triggers, like I don't get triggered like that um, in my place of business. Any advice for entrepreneurs dealing with, with that type of situation because um i deal a lot in the creative space Mm -hmm. so um i do a couple of different things but one of the things i deal with like is music right Mm -hmm. you know uh, i heard killer mike say you're dealing with emos and addicts (laughs) 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 so but i've also you know i've you know graphic designers photographers Mm -hmm. videographers painters you know, and even entrepreneurial entrepreneurship can be an art in itself too, especially if yeah. you, you know, create digital products, you know, you're using your mind to do that. So what mm-hmm. would something, what would some advice you would say to creatives in the business space, even though it doesn't affect you like that, mm-hmm. what would you, what, and what would be some advice that you would give for, uh, you know, creatives mm-hmm. in that, in that space, working both sides of the brain, if you will. Right. Um, again, I will go back to structure, and maybe that's why I don't deal with that so much coming from my, you know, my business to um, transitioning to my, like, my home life or what I do outside of that is because I have structure. Like, when I leave the door, then a little, all the time, not all the time I can turn it off because my phone still rings sometimes, mm-hmm. but I'm more like, this is what I'm doing at this time frame. Like I'm blocking it off. And so um, having structure, I think helps. Then I got to go back to meditation. Um, I know a lot of, for a lot of people, meditation may seem like it's all spiritual, but for me, it's a uh, performance tool. Like it helps me perform mentally and be um, stronger mentally. I can make better decisions and um, able to think more clear and more creative. And so I would say add that, to your life or your daily schedule and you will see your business um, life, your work life, all of that will be so much better. Meditation, like I said, I'm a huge advocate for it. And not just with spiritual, but like I said, it's a performance uh, performance tool mentally. And when you do the structure and the plan, um, mm-hmm. you said you're thinking <clears throat> about the next decade. What do you want to do in the next 10 years? Do you do you reverse engineer all the way from 10 years up until mm-hmm. tomorrow or do you do it a day by day, a week by week? How do you, how do you do it? And how would you, and I know everybody's different, but how yeah. would you and um, individuals do it? Um, yeah, I reverse engineer. I see where I want to be and then I track how, I, how I got there. So I always uh, speak in, you know, like it's already done. So I see myself in, in 10 years, in five years, in three years, um, in a year. And then I track it, um, how I got there. And then I, like I said, I break it down on a micro level. What do I need to do on a daily, uh, daily, um, day to day, uh, basis right now to get there. I need to align, be in alignment to make sure that how I'm living and the things that I'm doing today is in alignment with where I'm going to be a year from now. Mm. And and that's how you get gain momentum. Even if it you don't get exactly what you're going after that year goal, you'll be so much closer to it. And if you don't get exactly that, you're gonna get something because you took the proper steps to get there. Mm. Okay, okay, 
That makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I'm all sense. about the micro. So I'm all about what were you doing from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep? What does that look like? And is it conducive to you manifesting what it is that you're trying to manifest? Mm. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That yeah, makes sense. Okay, baby. Just in a few minutes. All right. Um, Sounds so cute. <laughs> Yeah, when, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit, <laughs> little bit, a right. yeah, little bit. Yeah. Um, three books that you would recommend for the people. First is Finding My Flow. I already Absolutely. know that. Finding My Flow is the number one. Mm-hmm. Would you uh, recommend two other books? Whether um, it be mindset, whether it be. Um, uh, entrepreneurship, business. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I'll put it strong for you. All right. um, what they do, King? What they do, King? Three books: Finding My Flow. I was Finding My Flow, um, mm-hmm. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, and then The Compound Effect. Those would be my other two books that I would recommend. Mm, mm. So you said find. Out, out, out doing the devil. Outwitting the devil by Napoleon outwitting Hill. Mm-hmm. By Napoleon Hill. Mm-hmm. Oh, I never yeah. heard of that one before. Yeah. I, I'm familiar with Think and Grow Rich, of course, yeah. like everybody. Right. What's that about? I'm gonna have to look into that. Um, it tells some stories uh, about different uh, business owners and how um, it talks about one guy and how the voices in his head was telling him to do one thing, but it was really him that he had to, he was his own enemy, basically. So it's teaching you how to, how to defeat yourself or that small version of yourself that try to talk you out of your dreams. It's a great book. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. I'm familiar with the, uh, with the compound. The compound effect, effect, I, I yes. Yeah, I've, I haven't read it yet. but I, yeah, I It's kind of in alignment with my message. It's all about what you do on that micro level. That's the compound effect. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much for this because I'm <laughs> I'm getting stuff from it, but I'm also speaking for other people. Mm. And um, I screen I screen record my lives and I put them on my YouTube channel, so it'll be okay. up for 24 hours. But then it'll be also on my YouTube channel as well. Do you have a YouTube channel? No, not. I do, but I don't post a lot on there. You don't post on it. All yeah. right. Um. Same name, Akia Davis? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll go ahead and tag you on that when I okay. post that. So anybody uh, missing it or just coming in, great information, great story. Um, there's something else that I want to ask you. Oh, you linked up with, uh, how did you link up with Monica? You was doing a live one time <laughs> with Monica, like, just one of them, yeah, Monica, the legendary Monica. I was like, whoa, this is like, this is yeah. like bonkers, yo. Yeah. Um, I've actually met Monica a few times, um, but I happened to, to be on her live, and she was like, oh, I like you. I like, you know, she liked my energy, and so we just, mm-hmm. I think I was chiming in on the subject that they were talking about, and we just kind of continued talking. <laughs> so it was pretty cool, yeah. Yeah, that was that was amazing. I, yeah. I jumped on that. I, I want to say it was like around the time your book had just dropped, too. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe right before. Right. It yeah, might have been something. still in the pre-sale or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. Cause I want to say so. it wasn't long after I bought it yeah. that it was on there. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, the <laughs> PR is nuts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that happened organically. <laughs> and that's how the things energy. happen for me. It, it really does. I really do attract great opportunities and great situations. And it does have to do with your energy. Mm. You have to keep your frequency high and stay positive. And, you know, when you put out good and you're feeling good, it's oh, mm. I can't even express that enough. Feeling good attracts good. So when you wake Absolutely. up in the morning, do whatever you have to do to feel good. And then throughout the day, you'll just see so much good being attracted to you. Mm. I do see that as well. Mm-hmm. I do see that as well, too. You yeah. know, that that morning, how how you start the day sets yes. the tone. It, it really, really, really sets the tone. It does. And I've seen that a lot. You mm-hmm. know I mean? that's, that's in all realms, you know, mm-hmm. business, 
uh, entrepreneurship, just relationships. Yeah. You know, the people who you come in contact with, who you deal with on a day to day basis, that um that really mm-hmm. plays a part. That definitely t- plays a part. Yeah. So, um, I think I think that's about all the questions I have for you because I was just so interested in the story mm-hmm. and the book <laughs> and uh, how you came about that, how you transitioned that. Mm-hmm. Um, where can the people find you? Are you most active on Instagram? Are there any other platforms that you're active on? Um, I'm mostly on Instagram. I do have a Facebook page that I'm sometimes active on, <clears throat> but um, but I'm actually starting a Facebook group, which is going to okay. be um, something that I can kind of help people a little bit more on. Like I can get in there and kind of post stuff and answer questions uh, a lot better than jumping on Instagram or just being on my regular Facebook page. So mm-hmm. I'll I'll be posting that soon as well for people to join. Please, please keep me yeah. informed. Keep I will. Me updated on Thank that. you so much for inviting me. Thank you so cool. much for coming on Mindset <laughs> Monday. Yeah. Um, you know, anything and everything that you have going on, I greatly support. So, you know, Appreciate anything that. that you have, I definitely repost it. I definitely mm-hmm. put it on my platform because uh, we need to see more strong women entrepreneurs sharing their story yeah. and uh, bringing bringing uh, your message to the marketplace definitely needed. Mm-hmm. It's definitely yeah. needed. We deal with, you know, we deal with so many issues as far as mental health, as far as energy, finding our flow, mm-hmm. um, chaos and confusion, lack of clarity. Yeah. Um, we just deal with so many different things. And most of the time, we don't have the time or don't have the time management in order to structure it and put it in alignment to get some direction so Mm -hmm. this uh what you bring to the marketplace and to the community and to the culture is pivotal is priceless so Mm -hmm. um i support you um you already know you know what i'm saying you know i support you you. so anything (laughs) that you're doing anything that you got going on queen Mm -hmm. please feel free you know my platform is yours, you know, to share your product, your message, whatever you have, let me know. And I'm definitely uh, in support. Um, Thank you. Of you. Thank you. And I just want to say one more thing. Like, I know some people think that you can't, you know, have like spiritual things or more like personal development and then have a business there. I think we're um, coming into a time where those two things can coexist. I was at an event um, here in Charlotte a, a few months back, and I ended up meeting the mayor of Charlotte, who's a mm-hmm. woman. And so we, we were having a conversation, and, and I was telling her about, like, you know, meditation stuff. She said, you know what? I just started getting into meditation. I really want to learn more about it. So I gave her my book, and she was like, I'm really going to read it and reach out to you about it. Um, she she hasn't reached out yet, but it's yeah. like, you know, no matter what professional or who you are, people are still dealing with stuff on a personal and spiritual level. So don't be afraid to express yourself um, wholeheartedly and authentically in your business because people can relate. Everybody's dealing with something. Everybody's on their own journey. And so when we're speaking authentically about what we have been through or, or what we're going through, mm-hmm. it, it makes your product or your business that much strong because, you know, people are now seeing you as someone they can relate to and it makes them want to support or buy your product even more. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, and like you said, it goes across all industries and mm-hmm. markets because, you know, we still have to have that mental, we still have to find our flow. We still have to, you know, create that energy yeah. and harness and manifest that good energy so we can mm-hmm. be a light to the world and continue to flourish in all of our endeavors. So yeah. it's definitely important. And it's really a foundational point. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's really a foundational point because you can have all the success and still not be happy. That's why right. there's, you know, commit suicide and do all these other crazy things as well, too. So we definitely uh, have to have that structure. So it's important. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. important. Absolutely. But um, thank you so much. You're thank welcome. You so thank much you. For coming on. Yeah. Um, and um, like I said, y'all, Black Lotus, the brand of lifestyle. Y'all already know I got to do my spiel. Y'all already <laughs> know what it is. Trey Snatch, Black Lotus, the brand of lifestyle. Pennies, dollars, dollars, celebrity, leverage your way to freedom with a Keith Davis. Finding my flow. Make sure y'all yep. cop that. Make sure y'all follow her. 
queen doing amazing things. She's out of the Charlotte area, but that book could be purchased globally on Amazon, Find, Finding My Flow. I got my copy. Make sure you get <laughs> yours. You right. feel what I'm saying? And get your flow. You can DM her. You can contact her for consultations. Yes. Um, you can find a book. The link's in your bio, right? Yes, it's in my bio. The link is in her bio. Make sure y'all go follow her and y'all go cop that. You feel me? Y'all want those consultations. Make sure y'all hit her up on that. She does the consultations. She got the mentorship. Hit that DM. Hit the link in the bio. And hit that follow button for Akia Davis. Thank you so, <laughs> so much, Queen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Make sure you uh, let me know when you come out with that group, okay? I will. Definitely will. All right. You have All a good right. evening. Blessings. All right. Financial Rebel, I'm going to stop this, save it, and we coming right back, King. We coming right back.